Welcome to episode number 25 of the uh, Dark Horror Podcast. Actually, I've been away for a little while because I uh, had all these things come up in the last couple of weeks. And uh, every other week turned into, shit, this happened like three weeks ago, the last episode. But we're back today. And uh, what a weird day to come back on the podcast. We'll talk about that in a moment. But today I was sitting around, I was watching, uh, damn, Mike is too high again. I was watching uh, the movie Anaconda on Netflix, you know, Netflix and Chill Time. I don't know if you've heard this before. If you listen to the UFO Buster Radio, you probably have. But uh, I really think that the film Anaconda needs to be uh, remade with Samuel L. Jackson taking the place of Ice Cube. Just move him over. Can you imagine... How expressive, how many F's are going to fly when that anaconda just shows up in the film? I'm telling you, that is a classic in the making. We need Samuel L. Jackson to be the one to uh, be on there during the film Anaconda. That's We should start a petition, to be honest. We, we need to make it work. We need Samuel L. Jackson to take that role. This is uh, the Dark Horror Podcast. Uh, apparently it's episode number 25. I, I wasn't, uh, whew, I, I didn't even think we had 25 episodes of the Dark Horde, but here we are. Today is a special day for all you, all you guys that love ghosts and poltergeists. We're going to throw those together. And then there was a really strange ass story relating Bigfoot. And honestly, it has nothing to do with Bigfoot, but the individual who, uh, I guess is the uh, main character this story is a Bigfoot hunter, which I think really it's a it's a wrong thing to say. People shouldn't be Bigfoot hunters because you, it sounds like you're going to kill Bigfoot the first time you see him. That's not what we want to do, right? We want to research Bigfoot, maybe a Bigfoot chaser, something like that. So, you know, if you're down in Australia, a Yowie, Yowie lover, Yowie hugger. You know, something nicer to show that you're not there to kill Bigfoot. But apparently that's um, that's a thing. Uh, Halloween. Next month. People are getting ready for this. I have driven through the neighborhood and there's already Halloween doc- uh, decorations out. And for the life of me, I don't understand why. It's like everyone is following the uh, Walmart rule. That is, you put up stuff about four months before the holiday even happens. I don't understand. I thought for sure COVID-19 would put the kibosh on Halloween, but apparently not. Everything else can go to hell in the handbasket, even earning a living. But for fuck's sake, if Halloween's not going to be impacted by COVID-19. Not this year. At least that's not the way it's looking, right? Uh, there was a, There was a point there where... People weren't doing like haunted houses. They weren't. They were closing down actual actual uh, haunted places. Like I say, you know how to how to deal with this. But it looks like all of a sudden we're going to have haunted houses, uh, haunted tours. As a matter of fact, we were looking at going to one in San Antonio, a little haunted tour, if you will. Check out some. Uh, hey, actually, it's north of San Antonio in New Braunfels. There's a 90 minute tour where you go down the uh, town's haunted history. Who the fuck knew New Braunfels would have a haunted history? Hopefully I get to take that tour. They don't cancel it, but we'll see what happens. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, By the way, what's up to Dave and Pucky, who are in the uh, live chat right now? Uh, Let's see what happens.
Cause I'm a true psychopath When you're lost, take your trust That's me, that's so sick I'm a fraud, I'm a fraud, call me a liar A true psycho This first story is, it's not so scary. Probably not scary at all, but shit. I like that sound. Wasn't it? Somebody say something about that. I'm sure somebody in the uh, in the chat has already mentioned something about it. Um, the first story explored a spooky spot in Pasadena on National Ghost Hunting Day. Yeah, I had no idea until I started getting ready for the podcast today that there was such a thing as Ghost Hunting Day. That's today, September the 26th. In the United States, it's a national day. Apparently, it's even on the damn calendar. If you use one of those national calendars that you get on Outlook or whatever mail program you use. And that's M-A-I-L for you perps. Um, In Pasadena, they're celebrating it. And actually, as you go through the news articles for today, you actually find there are many places who are doing ghost hunting today celebrating the hauntings of their local towns. This is the very first time I heard about this thing, and apparently somebody decided that after centuries of ghost stories being shared, uh, things that go bump in the night, devils, demons, poltergeists, all that kind of stuff, that they decided, hey, what? why not make it a fucking day of it? Let's all get together and do some hunting. It is just weird. Really, to have a ghost hunting day? But then, ghost hunting day where nobody hunts? I don't know. They just celebrate. They just do things. This was established back in July of 2016. And it celebrates the uh, novice, curious, and expert execution of ghost hunting. Whatever that is. How do you expertly execute a ghost hunting activity? I feel like... It's more trial and error than than anything else. I I think it's, um, I don't know. Like, I've had uh, zero good experiences, but it's the weirdest thing. Just now, I was watching a uh, ghost hunting show. Not even a show, it's about an hour and a half. It's almost a damn movie about these two guys who are hunting ghosts out of uh, the Las Vegas area, the norm. And they, um, they used the Uji board. One of them, during the exercise, got scared. And he pulled his hand off before signing off. It's like, you have to sign off or you're fucked, apparently. You, you got to go to the goodbye on the board or you're screwed. It was a bit of a jump scare. And apparently there was a guy that died in that house that was haunting it. And for weeks later, in their EVP recordings, the name continued to come up. The guy's name continued to come up over and over again. But they never really paid attention to it. 
But as most ghost uh, hunting activities go today, you've got like 10 billion cameras uh, capturing every moment. And every place that they went to investigate, there was some kind of poltergeist activity, things being tossed and thrown, being caught on camera. Eventually, they put all the videos together, and they figured out that this uh, ghost was following them all the way to the guy's house. In his house, where he lived, all of a sudden, he started having poltergeist activity. Well, the whole damn thing ends when they go back, because apparently they have to close the door, and uh, it was just crazy. Totally bananas. You guys got to see. I have a bad habit about talking about shows and never fucking having the title or the link, so... I owe everyone that, to be honest. And actually, if you go to the Discord chat, there's a link in the description. You might be able to get that information, if I ever fucking remember. Um, so, National Ghost Hunting Day today. And there is a tale, of course, out of Pasadena. Pasadena actually uh, put out an article about it. And they were talking about some of their famous uh, haunted situations down there that people should go check it out. One of them was the tale of the Don Juan Dentist. Really? That's a thing. Don Juan Dentist. Um, it is apparently one of the uh, more uh, popular stories out of Pasadena, California. A Russian-born lover of music, arts, and the ladies. The dentist was said to have been murdered under mysterious circumstances around 1933. I mean, what, they use wood anyway? They, they wouldn't even use porcelain. They use wood. What, what does it matter? Somebody was mad at Mr. Don Juan because he was shot multiple times near the Sphinx that guard the Scottish Rite Cathedral in Pasadena. According to news reports, at the time of his death, it remained a mystery, and still today, it is still a mystery, who gunned down the dentist. Now, as a dentist, if you're a ghost, what do you come back and drill on people's teeth? Uh, you pull teeth out. I don't know how that works. But thanks to that incident, that little area may be haunted now. It's a lesson to folks. Keep it in your pants. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you get shot down as a dentist. That's crazy. You got a great career. I mean, look at all the wood around us. You know how many wooden teeth it could have put in by then? I mean, come on. What a waste. What a complete waste. It is amazing how the paranormal really captures the um, the imagination, you know. Even when watching that particular documentary today, I think it's a documentary, um, still in the back of my mind, I think that this is fake. And you continue to you continue to fight with that, right? Because you you know in your in your in your core, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're listening to any other podcast, or if you sat around with family members two, three generations back who shared stories of hauntings, uh, ghosts, and things like that, there's a part of you that wants to believe that maybe it's true. Maybe we are more than just uh, a bag of bones, a meat suit. Maybe there is life after death. Maybe you do get to come back and fuck with people. I don't know. The only way to really figure that out is to experience it yourself. These days, there's too many, too much in special effects. Too many people try to get over on other people just to make a buck. You've got to experience this yourself. Record it yourself. I'm sure you could tell these guys that had shit flying off of shelves and uh, things being thrown across the, across the room when allegedly no one else is in the home, when no one else is in the actual room. You probably could never tell them that this was all fake. But again, it's kind of like you have to be there. You really do have to be there. Or know them personally to know that they're trustworthy. And aren't trying to pull a fast one on you just to get movie rights to something. Either way, fascinating day. Hopefully, next year, we can take advantage of it. 
and do our own hunting, like real hunting. This next story reminds me of uh, of all the ghost hunters, you know, people that take all these great pictures of UFOs and uh, someone stumbles ac- across their stash of these model UFOs, all this camera equipment and how they set the uh, set the shot up uh, and stuff like that. This, this is what this is reminding me of. Apparently, <laughs> I got to laugh because this is why you should not be a Bigfoot hunter. Bigfoot Hunter, because that's what we call it right now, um, is arrested for attempted murder. Not of Bigfoot, 
by the way. You no, know, this this lady was not trying to kill Bigfoot. No, because she loves Bigfoot. She does. Dearly. Uh, Gwendolyn Michelle Jones. That's the first problem. She's got three names. 39. Uh, out of Shelby County Jail. That's where she's at right now. After firing a weapon at a sleeping male in a uh, Shelby County home on September the 2nd. So it was this month. <sighs> Maybe he was hairy. Maybe he had like really big feet. You know, I don't know. You know, if Bigfoot has an outcast from the tribe, do they shave him down? I mean, is that the way that you outcast someone if you're part of a, a Bigfoot clan? You shave the fucker down. Then they look human. Then you kick him out. And then this ousted Bigfoot person ended up in somebody's bed. And Gwendolyn was there. And she wasn't fucking around. She had a uh, a Rugger LCP 380. And she shot at the poor guy multiple, pl- multiple times while he was sleeping. The guy was even, even threatening her. He, he was asleep. That was some serious snoring. Or he was farting. I don't know which one it was. Whatever it was, it's, it sounded dangerous. After getting uh, shot up, right? Got the bullet holes in him. He wakes up. <laughs> Uh, like most people, I think, would die at that point, right? They're dead. They got shot. No, not this guy, which uh, they didn't uh, publish his name, of course, because he's the victim. Uh, no, he actually woke up. He woke up and um, saw her standing across the room in the hallway, holding the pistol aimed at him. So he woke up. She saw him. She saw her, saw, saw him. They looked at each other, and uh, for good measure, he de- she decided to shoot him up some more. Yeah, she wasn't fucking around. She was ending this dude. Apparently, the uh, the Rugger LCP-380 is not a very good weapon, or she's a horrible shot. Because he's still alive. Whoever this shaved Bigfoot, he, he is alive. Um, it turned out that uh, the reason why we know... She was a Bigfoot hunter. Uh, was because Gwendolyn Michelle Jones was uh, reported by the Outlook, which is the uh, the local paper, the month before um, that she was affiliated with the Bigfoot Research Group. She was, according to her, the Southeast Regional Coordinator. Imagine that. She was helping to conduct research on Sasquatch over there by the uh, Talladega National Forest. Sounds like a cool gig. Apparently she was in the military and law enforcement for 15 years. Can't kill a a (laughs) shaved Bigfoot. Apparently not. Sitting still asleep. She also stated when she had that interview last month that she had discovered an adult male and female Sasquatch in the area along with juveniles and that she would leave food weekly for uh, her buddy the cryptid, the hairy cryptid. She's been searching ever since for other Southeast individuals who have credible sightings like hers. At least she thinks it's credible. But unfortunately for her, it looks like her time... I mean, what the fuck is a Bigfoot family going to do now? They've got no food. Because she has been charged with uh, criminal trespassing and uh, attempted murder. Oh, yeah, hold, wait, (laughs) we're not done. She was also charged with uh, first-degree domestic violence. Maybe she had a love triangle with the shaved Bigfoot. I don't know. The the story really doesn't go into it, of course, because, you know, got to protect the names of the innocent and apparently some of the guilty, too. Uh, But according to the jail website, she has a $81,000 bond 
uh, in order to get out for a bit to go feed the Bigfoot family. Like, I wouldn't even go near her at this point if I was Bigfoot. But um, what's going on? Why did she shoot this guy up in his sleep? Who knows? And, and, you know, there could be a lot of things going on. Maybe the shaved Bigfoot was violent. That's why they kicked him out of the tribe. And uh, maybe he did some things. Went to sleep and she got revenge. It could be a whole horde of things. But nonetheless, please don't use the term Bigfoot hunter and then go shoot somebody up. That really takes away from the uh, the majestic title of being a uh, Bigfoot researcher. You make the rest of us look bad. Well, not me. You make the rest of the researchers look bad, Gwendolyn Michelle Jones. Shaved Bigfoots are cryptids too. There's no need to shoot them up. There really isn't. There's more to the article. It's in the description. Actually, for the first story as well, uh, regarding there's two articles for the first story regarding today being Ghost Hunting Day. And uh, if you want to know more about Gwendolyn and her badass aim, 15 years in law enforcement and the military, and her ass cannot freaking end someone that's sleeping in the bed. I don't know. This story is just completely wacky. But, you know, for those of you who love Bigfoot, there you go. Bigfoot may be saved, but there is a family of Bigfoot out there somewhere that's starving right now because Gwendolyn is a bad shot. Check for me. 
the last article has to do with the uh, the Poltergeist film series. Now, many of you, maybe the majority, may be in the age group where you saw the first Poltergeist movie in 1982. And then thereafter, right? Because you can... Pops up all the time fucking during Halloween. And, and then some of you had the misfortune of watching the other two. Two and three. And I think there may be a number four on the way here shortly, believe it or not. But there was this thing about the Poltergeist movies. And actually, there was a thing about the Amityville, Amityville movies also as well. About the bad things, the horrid things that happened to the cast members. Now, I, I really didn't look into it, but fuck, I'm doing some ghost hunting. Why not look at what happened to these guys? There's an article from Looper that talks about the tragic real-life story of the Poltergeist cast. Jeez Louise, really. Um, completely crazy. I mean, how do you get... It's it's weird to me. Like, I, I can understand, you know, like, if you have a uh, a cast... Let's say I have a show or a movie or whatever, a sitcom, and maybe one person dies within five years, maybe three, who knows. But when you have a lot of the cast members dying the fuck off, there's there could be something wrong. And so with Poltergeist, people were starting to think that the film was cursed. I know they weren't, um, I don't know. Some of these deaths are just kind of weird. It's just a weird situation. I'm going to talk about three of them. The first one is Dominique, Dominique Dune. She played, she played uh, Dana Freeling, which was the older sister in the film, the first film, the Poltergeist film. Um, they say that this is one of the, uh, the craziest, most uh, grisly and tragic deaths of the cast. Dominic died at the age of 22. The funny thing is that she died um, right after the film. So in Poltergeist 2, it was the same family again. So they had to explain why the older sister is gone. Now, now, this is Hollywood. Why did they uh, just replace her? It makes no sense to me. But uh, what they did was that they said that her character the character she played in the uh, the movie Dana um, Dana apparently went to college in reality she was dead she was killed by her boyfriend on October 30th 1982 she was brutally strangled by an ag- aggravated ex-boyfriend the ex-boyfriend was uh, sous chef John Sweeney. He showed up at her worst, uh, West uh, Hollywood home trying to make up, you know, get the relationship back together again because there were problems. By the way, this was 1982. The film came out in June of 1982. She passed away October 30th. I'm sorry, uh, November 4th of 1982. The incident occurred October 30th, the day before Halloween. They got into an argument at a driveway, and that's when uh, things fell apart. When the cops got there, Sweeney apparently was quoted in the police report as saying, I've killed my girlfriend. Uh, Dune was still alive, though, barely, and she was rushed over to Cedar Sinai Medical Center, where she remained in a coma for five days. Never came out of the coma. November 4th, 1982, just three weeks before her 23rd birthday, the, uh, she was removed from life support and pronounced dead. Now, that's the first tragic... I mean, that's a tragedy right there, right? Um, wow. What do you do with that? You know, you, you come off a, a, a successful film. I mean, there's no doubt that 
Poltergeist, the first film, was a great film. Great, scary film. But it doesn't end there. There's a, there's a lot of cast members who have kicked the bucket. Um, not trying to be insensitive, but I'm just telling you how it is. Julian Beck, if you look at the uh, image for the uh, podcast episode today, Julian played Cain, and he was the preacher in Poltergeist 2. Uh, Poltergeist 2 was released four years later in 1986. Um... The weird thing here is that his death wasn't a shock to everyone because actually while they were filming Poltergeist 2, uh, Julian was battling stomach cancer. And throughout production, everyone in the cast knew that um, he was battling this. So (laughs) the face, look at the face. This may have been a result of his battle. Not too much makeup there. Uh, He was diagnosed in 1983, a year after the first movie came out. So everyone on the film said they knew. But some believed that um, a lot of what happened to him was due to the the way he passed away in the film. So you're thinking it's a coincidence, right? And actually, some of the uh, surviving cast members are saying the same thing. It's all a coincidence. There's no curse. It's not real. They just happen to die that way. Right? Nothing happening there. Somebody shows up with stomach cancer? Sure, let's use him on the set. He looks crazy anyway. He looks like he's fighting cancer. He looks like a preacher that's got an evil side to him. Let's have him on the show. Heather O'Rourke. We know Heather as Carol Ann. Little sweet Carol Ann. You know, go to light. This is the one that um, apparently continues to fuel the idea that the uh, the film was cursed. Carol Ann, or Heather, actually uh, made it for all three films. In 1987, during the production of Poltergeist 3, Heather Rourke, O'Rourke, uh, was going treat- undergoing treatment for Crohn's disease. But we find out later that it was misdiagnosed. You see, in January 1998, she became severely ill, and her her health really started to take a dive. Mind you, she was only 12 years old. February 1st, 1988, she was rushed to the hospital, where she was uh, diagnosed as going septic, in septic shock. And eventually died from an undetected intestinal blockage. The blockage had ruptured, and all the toxins that were in her intestines quickly uh, made their way through her body. She went into a septic shock and died. During the operation, where they tried to uh, to save the twelve year old. Um, they found out that um, yeah, she did. She never had Crohn's disease. Somehow, this was severely misdiagnosed. She had an obstruction in her intestine. Completely nuts. When she passed away. The film was actually uh, uh, released five months later after her passing away. And um, they really try their best not to connect the two, her passing and uh, the film. So much so that uh, 
The film had a lot of marketing complications at the time because of her passing. And um, uh, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer tried their best not to exploit the fact that she passed, which would be pretty hardcore, right? Could you imagine that? Passing as an actor or actress and all of a sudden the movie company is trying to cash in on it. Now there's a a theory that goes back to Poltergeist 1 as to why the film is cursed. And actually there's several. So if you want to look at the link in the description, go ahead. From Looper, there's a a discussion of why people think it's cursed. There is a... uh, there is a thing, if you remember Poltergeist 1, you know, when we figure out that there is a, uh, they're living by, there's a burial, Indian burial ground, and there's bodies that are coming out from the mud, you know. Um, it turns out that the mud actually contained real cadavers. <laughs> Spare no fucking expense, right? You want these things to look dead like real cadavers. Well, get some real ones. We don't need no plaster or anything like that or cut them out of foam or something like that. They actually used real skeletons. And actually, not just in the first movie, but also the second movie. Holy shit. That's almost, oh man, that's just, uh, I I couldn't imagine that really happening. How would someone think it was a great idea to have real skeletons of people? People have passed away, uh, dress them up all nice and muddy, and have your, your, uh, your cast swim around them in mud. For two fucking movies, not just one. I mean, could I get any real... I mean, shit, that movie's taking a different turn for me now. They use, like, real props. This is, like, real shit here. It is really strange. Uh, Let's be honest. For all these people to die. But again, we are 2020 right now. This movie came out early to mid-80s. But for them to die so close together, uh, within the time frame of the three films... It's suspect, to say the least. Still a classic movie. Poltergeist. Two and three, no fucks are given. I don't think I watched those today. Number one, of course I would. Just like the Amityville Horrors. This is the episode for today. Check out the links. Visit those. Halloween probably will not be cancelled thanks to Wuhan. We might be able to continue stocking up on the candy and having the shits the day after. But will it it all be laced with COVID-19? That really is going to be the scare this year. Ciao. I don't know why I can't get you out of my mind And if I find a way to get it when I do it I can live it and forget it Cause I hate how much I love you or I hate how you just put me in my feelings I just wish you understood the gravity but you got low sinners I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember I've been wasting my time I don't know why I can't get you out my mind Yeah, now I'm so lost, where do I go? I was in a chase, caught a flat on road It was all love, X no O I was feeling rich, but we turned out broke North Pole, 
life so cold Luke warm love, just took it to the stove You were bad, news, all kind, no pro We grew apart fast I guess we was reaping what we sold I guess we was unequally yoked Guess if we was putting on the show Guess we should have tried to take it slow Guess I let my feelings take control Guess I let my demon take the wheel Used to think that we be growing old Now I can't believe that it was real It was back in late December when I did it I just wish I could forget it Cause I hate how much I love it Oh, I hate how I just love to catch a feeling yeah. And you told me that you understood depravity But now I know you didn't I guess it's better just to live it and forget it Than to live it and remember Dead Man Walking.